this is Naomi with Sword and Steel, and today we are going to be looking at the command phase, as well as stratagems. I'm just going to go through the stratagems at the end so that you get a good idea of how you might use them in-game, and I hope you enjoy this video. <laughs> We've learned to move, we've learned to shoot, we've learned to charge, and we've learned to fight. We've got the basic mechanics of 40k down. Now it's time to ramp it up a bit and add in the command phase. That first phase that I've been completely ignoring all this time, that's the one. So if you recall, a player's turn follows this series of phases. The command phase, the movement phase, the shooting phase, the charge phase, and then the fight phase in that order before the next player gets to start their turn and do all of the same. In the command phase, there are two steps. The first step is the command step, and the second step is the battle shock step. In the command step, before anything else happens, both players gain a resource called a command point. These command points can be used on special abilities called stratagems, which can help you or hinder your opponent at certain points in a turn. I didn't mention them until lesson five because until you know your units and what your opponent's units do, it may be difficult to strategically decide when to use the command points and when to hold on to them for later. Besides the one command point you gain in the command step, each player can only gain one more command point in a battle round, no matter where it comes from. So you have to use it wisely. But before we go into the very stratagems that you'll be able to use the command points for, let's continue discussing the command phase. Okay, so you've gained your command point. After that, anything that says it will happen in the command phase happens now. For example, Lion L. Johnson, Primarch of the Dark Angels, has an ability that says, in your command phase, you select one of the Primarch of the First Legion abilities, which would be the abilities over here, until the start of your next command phase, this model has that ability that you chose. So after players have gained their command point, abilities like that will trigger. If multiple abilities trigger at the same time during a game, not necessarily only in the command phase, but like at the beginning of the movement phase, or at the beginning of the charge phase, and so on, the person whose turn it is, chooses the order those abilities will happen. Before or after a battle, on the other hand, or at the start or end of a battle round, the players roll off and the winner decides the order. So when it's not someone's turn, you roll off. When it is someone's turn, the person whose turn it is chooses the order for those triggered abilities to happen. Now, let's move from the command step to the battle shock step. As you may guess from the term battle shock, this step will determine if seriously wounded units are too shaken due to their losses to keep fighting through the combat as well as they have been. You can imagine that those without fear, or those too completely crazy or mindless to notice their losses, that all will be less affected than those who have a sense of camaraderie among their fellow people. Now, in this step, each of your units that are below half strength have to take a battle shock test. You may also be forced at some point to take a battle shock test by some model's ability, so keep an eye out for that too. It'll work the exact same way, besides the fact that the unit won't necessarily have to be below strength to have to take that battle shock test. When is a unit below half strength? Well, when a unit has only one model in it, then it is below half strength when the model has lost more than half of its original wounds, its starting strength, which is its wounds characteristic. When a unit has more than one model, in it, on the other hand, the unit is considered below half strength when the unit has lost more than half of the models that originally made up the unit at the beginning of the battle, so its starting strength equals the number of models it originally had. So in your battle shock step, your units that are below half strength each have to take a battle shock test. To do so, roll 2d6 for the unit, and if the result is greater than or equal to the best leadership characteristic in the unit, which would be the lowest leadership characteristic, the test is passed. Otherwise, the test is failed and until the start of your next command phase, that unit is considered battle shocked. While a unit is battle shocked, the objective control characteristic of all of its models is zero. Controlling objectives is important in 40k. It's often how you gain victory points and win the battle. No matter how many models you lost or destroyed, if you need to win via victory points, you probably need to be controlling objectives. Let's talk about objective control. Games of Warhammer 40k often begin with objective markers on the battlefield to represent places or items of interest that you and your opponent want to take control of. 
You can use any physical marker you like that you or your opponent agree on, but you'll see that the common practice is to use round markers that are 40 millimeters in diameter. To take control of such an objective, you must have units within range of that objective marker, and those units must have a greater level of control than that of your opponent's units within range. For a model to be within range of an objective marker, it must be within three inches horizontally and five inches vertically of the closest edge of that objective. Your level of control over an objective is the sum of all the objective control characteristics of your models in range of that objective. For example, here I have three Cerberus Silverhounds in range of this objective marker, and they each have an objective control of two. My level of control over the marker is therefore six, and at the moment, I have control over this objective because I have greater level of control than my opponent. But if these termagants from the Tyranids, however, come into range of the objective during their charge phase, and they also have an objective control characteristic of two, then as long as more than three of them get into range, the Tyranids will have a higher level of control than the Admech and will take control of the objective at the end of the phase. If there is a tie of level of control, or if no one is within range of an objective, or if it is the very beginning of a battle, then the objective is considered to be contested not controlled. Oh, and you will probably hear the reference to objectives elsewhere. For example, there will be mission primary objectives or your army's secondary objectives, but these are more like achievements you have to strive for rather than physical objects on the battlefield that your models need to get close to. So when it comes to the word objectives, you'll have to take it in context. All right, so while a unit is battleshocked, the objective control characteristic of all of its models is zero. If the unit is battleshocked, falls back, you must take a desperate escape test for every model in the unit, not just the ones that had to move over enemy models to escape. And lastly, the controlling player of that battleshocked unit cannot use stratagems to affect that unit. Once you have taken battleshock tests for all of your units that requires you take them, your command phase ends and you go on to your booming phase. All right, let's reiterate. A battle generally runs five battle rounds, and in each battle round, each player gets one turn. Each turn begins with the command phase, where both players gain one command point, and then we have the battleshock step, where the person whose turn it is rolls for all of their units that are below half strength. Once that has been resolved, the active player moves every unit they wish to move in the movement phase and drops in any models from reserve that they want to drop in. Then in the shooting phase, they shoot all of the weapons that they want to shoot with, then charge their units in the charge phase, those that didn't fall back or advance, of course, and then both players fight in the fight phase with units that are within engagement range of enemy models. And then the next player takes their turn doing the same thing before a new battle round begins. Now, we are ready to see what stratagems do. So command reroll is the first one. Uh, this shows that it costs one command point versus like two command points, one command point to use. And uh, the turquoise means that it's on either player's turn. The blue is for your turn and the red is for your opponent's turn. Just a reminder. It'll tell you when you can use it, but just a quick reminder. So command reroll re one command point when in any phase, just after you have made a hit roll, a wound roll, a damage roll, a saving throw, an advance roll, a charge roll, a desperate escape test, a hazardous test, or just after you have rolled the dice to determine the number of attacks made with weapon for an attack model or unit from your army. For example, with Admech, I might save a command reroll for rerolling the damage to one of my Onager Doom crawlers rolls when they're shooting their neutron laser, as an example. Effect, you reroll that roll, test, or saving throw. Easy peasy. Command reroll, you get to reroll something. Next is counter offensive, which is two command points. So very, you have to choose a very good time for it because you're not going to have more than two command points very often at all. So it says nothing about the command points expiring, so you do get to save them up. Okay, when in the fight phase, just after an enemy unit has fought, and remember this is either your fight phase or their fight phase, target one unit from your army that is within engagement range of one or more enemy units that has not already been selected to fight this phase. Your unit fights next. So that's really nice. It jumps one of your units ahead to fight next. Could be very valuable 
um, could really save yourself or fail cause an enemy unit to um, perish. Anyway, very useful. No wonder it's two command points. You use it when it could really change the game around. Epic challenge for one command point. When fight phase, when a character unit from your army that is within engagement range of one or more attached units is selected to fight. Target is one character model in your unit. Effect, until the end of the phase, all, may, all melee attacks made by that model have precision ability. And that means normally a character unit can't be uh, targeted if they're within an attached unit and this gets past that. If you recall, precision is weapons with precision in their profile are known as precision weapons, which is the most obvious part of every one of them. Anyway, each time an attack made with such a weapon successfully wounds an attached unit. If a character model in that unit is visible to the attacking model, the attacking model's player can choose to have that attack allocated to that character model instead of following the normal attack sequence. Which is great. Very good because those character models are quite nasty and taking them out is very nice. So it makes so this epic challenge, gives your character in engagement range an ability to do that. Very nice for one command point. Um, all right, next is insane bravery. This is going to be used in your, uh, on your turn. One command point. When Battleshock step of your command phase, just after you failed a Battleshock test taken for a unit from your army, target the unit from your army that the Battleshock test was just taken for. Um, even though your Battleshock units cannot normally be affected by your stratagems, effect your unit is treating as having is treated as having passed that test instead is not and is not Battleshocked as a result. Insane bravery. I think you'd most often use that to protect your objective control over a particular objective. Now, grenade, one command point. When your shooting phase, target one grenade's unit, and you'll see in your unit's keywords if they are grenades. From your army that is not within engagement range of any enemy unit has not been selected to sh shoot this phase effect. Select one enemy unit that is not within engagement range of any enemy units from your army and is within eight inches and visible to your grenades. Roll six d6 for each four plus that enemy unit suffers one more wound. I like how they've done grenade with this, just turned it into a stratagem. So within eight inches, visible to your grenades unit. Roll six. Whoa, whoa, whoa! I read. I don't think I read that. Roll sixty-six for each four plus that enemy unit suffers one mortal wound. That's great. Grenades have been buffed up. Of course, it does require one command point, but I can see that being used. Okay, tank shock. One command point. When your charge phase, target one vehicle unit from your army. Effect until the end of the phase. After your unit ends a charge move. Select one enemy unit within engagement range of it. Then select one melee weapon your unit is equipped with. Roll a number of d6 equal to that weapon's strength characteristic. Let me just check that again until the end of the phase, which is your charge phase. After your unit ends a charge move, select one engagement enemy unit within engagement range. Select one melee weapon your unit is equipped with. Roll a number of d6 equal to the strength characteristic of that weapon. If that strength characteristic is greater than that enemy unit's toughness characteristic, very cute, roll two additional d6, nice. For each five plus, that enemy unit suffers one mortal wound. A maximum of six mortal wounds, that's a great little ability, I like that, tank shock. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I like that. You may find um, better stratagems in your own army, but I like that. Just a, uh, I mean... 5 plus is not exactly a good chance. You may get one, one mortal wound, depending or all, uh, depending on, but your, if your tank is like 12 strength, weapon strength, if, yeah, if your tank is 12 strength and you get five, two, five plus on average, probably three. If you're not completely unlucky and that enemy suffers one mortal wound for each one, I think it'd be nice if you really needed those last mortal wounds to get through. A rapid ingress. One command point. When end of your opponent's movement phase, target one unit from your army that is in with reserves. 
effect. Your unit can arrive on the battlefield as if it were the reinforcement stuff of your movement phase. So it's on your opponent's movement phase. You can bring your guys in as if it were your movement phase. Restrictions. You cannot use this stratagem to enable a unit to arrive on the battlefield during a battle round. It would not normally... I like it though. I like it. All right. Fire Overwatch. One command point. When your opponent's movement or charge phase. Just after an enemy unit is set up. Or when an enemy unit starts or ends a normal advance, fallback, or charge move. Really cool that it's movement or charge phase. I like that it's powerful like that. One unit from your army that is within 24 inches does... And 24 inches? That's cool too. 24 inches of that enemy unit and that would be eligible to shoot if it were your shooting phase. Effect, your unit can shoot that enemy unit as if it were your shooting phase and restrictions until the end of the phase. Each time a model in your unit makes a ranged attack, an unmotivated hit roll of six require is required to score a hit, irrespective of the attacking weapon's ability, skill, or any modifiers. You can only use this stratagem once per turn, uh, which means you wouldn't be able to use it in your movement phase and their movement phase and their charge phase just once per turn. Um, I can see why they have that restriction there. And of course, on my fight, it roll of six. So just your sixes. So, but anything with big shots, anything with a large number of shots, that could be really useful. Anything that has torrent doesn't care about that. I mean, this makes torrent weapons quite nasty for your opponent. So I like that. Okay. Go to ground. One command point. When your opponent's shooting phase just after an enemy unit has selected its targets. So yeah, okay. Target one inf infantry unit from your army that ha was selected as the target of one or more of the attacking unit's attacks. Effect, until the end of the phase, all models in your unit have a six plus invuln save and have the benefit of cover, which gives you a plus one to save anyway. So nice, go to ground for infantry units. Could be really handy if you had a big group and they're about to be shot at, shot to bits by this enemy unit. Uh, and then we've got smoke screen. Uh, one command point when your opponent's shooting phase, just after an enemy unit has used, has selected its attacks, one smoke unit. And again, at this, just like the grenade, the smoke unit, the smoke is going to be under their keywords, or sometimes it's an optional thing that you can take. Anyway, it would be on your data sheet if your unit was had a smoke ability to uh, target, to have this target them from your unit that was selected as the target of one or more of the attacking unit's attacks. Effect, until the end of the phase, all models in your unit have the benefit of cover and have the stealth ability. Stealth being a minus one to hit. Benefit of cover is gives you a uh, plus one to your saving throw. Stealth gives you a minus one to hit. So that's really nice smoke screen. All right. And then lastly, we have heroic intervention for two command points. When your opponent's charge phase just after an enemy unit ends a charge move. Target one unit from your army that is within six inches of that enemy unit. and would be eligible to declare a charge against that enemy unit as if it were your charge phase. If it were your charge phase, I should say. Effect, your unit now declares a charge that targets only that enemy unit and you resolve that charge as if it were your charge phase. You'd roll your dice to see if you succeed. Restrictions, you can only select a vehicle unit from your army if it is a walker. So no tanks can do this. Note that even if this charge is successful, your unit does not receive any charge bonus this turn. Oh, well, that's a very big restriction. A charge bonus would be fights first. Still, so you don't get your fight's first charge bonus, which would be a very big thing. So anyone, so your opponent's charging models would get to fight first. But the fact that you can get your guys in one unit from your army that is within six inches of that enemy unit and would be eligible to clear a charge. Yeah, so you could get your guys, you could get your guys in. If they're attacking something else, you can scoot your guys in to attack them for two command points, though. So you must really want to get them in there. That could definitely happen. 
but not with a vehicle unit unless it's uh, unless it's a walker. I like all of these stratagems. Very handy. Can come in, can really change the game around. That's their point. And you also have army specific stratagems. Like if we go over to Dark Angels, which is what I was looking at earlier, we have. So the Dark Angels have this rule. All of all armies have a special rule right here. Um, it's called a detachment rule. Um, when alternate rules come out, uh, you may have more than one detachment rule to choose from. But if you choose the Unforgiven Task Force detachment rule, it gets this. All right. Mm -hmm. And then the, here are the stratagems for the Dark Angels if they have the Unforgiving Task Force force detachment rules, suggesting that there will be future detachment rules that have future stratagems for them. And there we go. And then again, there is the detachment rule on Forgiven Task Force, which has enhancements, which are little benefits that you can give to your model. And I'll tell you when to give your model, how to give your model, which we'll go into in the next lesson when we're looking into building your army legally to play a game of Warhammer 40,000. Now it is mission time. So my mission to help you remember everything for this lesson, as well as practice the previous lessons, is called Press the Attack. In this mission, you are in round three of your game, and many of your units have lost good people, or bad people, depending on who you're playing. Either way, it is your turn, and you have just begun your command phase. So I'd like you to play some form of terrain on the battlefield that goes right across the battlefield, requiring you to use your previous knowledge on how to get over it. On the other side of the table, there is an objective and your opponent has several miniatures that will be able to shoot at you while you cross the battlefield. They can be as intimidating or as unintimidating as you like, and you can change it up between efforts for the mission, whatever you want. The opponent will stay there and will shoot at you with everything it's got on his turn, so you are going to have to try to get there as fast as you can before you're wiped off the board. And of course, you can shoot them on the way as you're going if you have any ranged weapons. Now down on your side of the battlefield, at most six inches from your battlefield edge, place one model with at least five wound characteristic or more and have it at below half strength. Place a unit near it that had a starting strength of at least five models, but is also now below half strength. Since it's your command phase, you will gain a command point. Assume you started the round with zero command points remaining, but you will also have to roll battle shock tests for your units. Make sure to do so and then play out the mission. If you have a friend to play with, let them gun you down with their models. Don't worry, you can switch it up after this game and make them have to play through this mission. If you're trying this alone, just have any data sheet from any army that you'd like and use that data sheet to have the models shooting you down from their objective. I wish you the best of luck and if you do try out this mission, make sure you comment about how you did. Did your opponent gun you down before you got in range? Did you have to try again? Did your model stay battle shocked the entire time so you couldn't use your stratagems on them? Or did you get to the command reroll at some point? Did you try out any of your army specific stratagems? This would be a good time to give them a go. Let me know. And as always, if you had any questions about the rules, let me know that as well. Did you notice the cool tokens I was using throughout the video? Well, they are from a company called Buy the Same Token and they are offering a 10% discount to all you lovely viewers if you go to the website and use the code STEAL when you make a purchase. I thought these were great tokens and I'm happy to show them off. They have objective tokens, wound tokens, battle shock tokens, plus or minus wound tokens, plus or minus save tokens, and various others that will help you keep track of your game. So if that's something you think might come in handy, their link is in the description of the video. No, I'm not being sponsored by them or anything like that. I just think that they are fantastic and we're sharing with you. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, if you found it useful, make certain to like. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, make certain to subscribe. And of course, you can either become a patron or just give a little tip to me if you thought that this was really useful and you want to see more stuff like it. Thanks for watching. Bye!
A big shout out and thank you to the patrons and YouTube members that support the channel and keep it going and allowing me to get random things that will help the channel grow. I really appreciate it. You're the best. I hope you're having a fantastic day. I hope you are like, what's going on in this thumbnail? That's what I, that's what I was wanting. So do let me know if you enjoyed that. It was a lot of fun and I took way too long to make that thumbnail.